Whoops. Uh, I'm glad they didn't do an audio introduction because often people drop the G in my name when I'm introduced, and I'm introduced as a dick lover. <laughs> Unfortunate all my life, but it did set me up, I guess, to run a comedy company, which I do, Funny or Die. And for me, the journey really began in 1992 when I was the first employee of ESPN Enterprises and we determined that computer-delivered information was going to be important to grow the brand from being just one network to something more. Sounds obvious today, but remember in 1992, the only people who had heard of the Internet were some NASA geeks and Harvard dropouts and maybe Al Gore. But what we did, we were a content company and we knew we didn't understand technology and software. So we went to where the experts were in that, which at the time was up in Seattle, and we partnered with Paul Allen's Starwave Company, who were passionate about the technology. We let them do their thing in their culture with us. ESPN.com was a huge, huge success from day one. And the lesson was learned that carried throughout it all, which was you work with people, who are great at what they do, who are passionate at what they do, and let them thrive in their environment. For that, I was promoted with others to become an executive at the Disney Internet Group, and our first project was Go.com, which was a colossal failure. <laughs> Why? What was different? And what was different was Disney tried to impose their culture and their perspective in an area that was foreign. We bought a company called InfoSeq, which at the time was probably the leading search engine. The executive said, we have this great engine for contextual advertising and selling advertising against it. To which a very, very senior level Disney executive replied, there will never be any money in search. It's all about portals. The InfoSeq execs quit. Go.com lost literally hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars, and Google built one of the most powerful ad engines ever. Lesson learned, exact same thing, but the reverse. I then had a stop at NASCAR, relevant for this. I met Will Ferrell, Adam McKay, and Judd Apatow when producing the movie Talladega Nights, which indirectly led to Funny or Die. Funny or Die was launched in 2007. The system at that time was showing signs of really breaking. The cost of creating content in Hollywood was soaring out of control. The cost of marketing that content was clearly uneconomical. User-generated content was happening all over now, and the first successes of social media were appearing up in Silicon Valley. We were a Silicon Valley-based company. We saw this as an opportunity to create the counter model where you keep the cost of content low, you keep the cost of marketing low, and you can distribute without middlemen easily. And so, we really looked at three ways to build that model. First, put talent first, enable great creative people. Second, marry the best of two very disparate cultures, Hollywood and Silicon Valley. And then third, be nothing like Kevin Costner. The site was launched with this video. Hi, Pearl. You don't have to raise your voice. You pay you! I can give you half. You pay little bitch. Hey, don't talk to me like that, okay? I can this crap. Look, I, I thought I was clear in my email that I needed a couple weeks. I worked too hard. Can I just get two more weeks? You need to relax. Yeah, that's all. Uh-uh. It's not my money, bitch. Hey, don't call me bitch. I'm a grown man. The, and as I said, the key to the model is putting talent first. And, and, and the first way we did this was Will and Adam and Chris and Judd, they were enlisted with an equity model, not work for hire. Being partners in the company, they were economically incented, as you can see they're incented, they were economically incented by the success of the company, while at the same time they were emotionally incented by the idea of having a new playground in which they could play with essentially creative freedom. And aligning the interest of really, really talented people with the company's interest was the smartest thing, clearly, that we did. But how did we do the 
you know, that work with all the other celebrities we work with? How do we get an award-winning French actress to put boobs on her forehead? How do we get another Academy Award winner to let us hack her cell phone and put up kinky videos from it? How do we get Sean Penn to sit with Zach Galifianakis on a local cable TV inner show with a deodorant product placement in the middle of it? <laughs> How do we get someone, another famous for being famous person, to be inserted in a presidential campaign and be taken seriously? And then finally, how do we get every actor who'd ever played a president on Saturday Night Live to get together to do one video? And how do we do it without one single Hollywood contract? And we did it again by letting the talent have the freedom to say and do what they want, to promote what they want, to have, cre to have the, the fun and excitement in doing it very easily, and to not get any notes from any executives, but yet have the full creative freedom. Also, it is risk-free for them, because if it doesn't work, eh, some shitty little internet video, nobody cared, but if it did, they would then get as much notoriety as any hit they have done. And that's the antithesis of what they face every day in the Hollywood system. And while it's something they were born to do, they get so often get thwarted by the system, whereas here, the system enables them to experience their passions, do the work that they want to do. The second part of the model, up, oh, got ahead of myself. The model also works for so-called emerging talent, which for us means inexpensive. <laughs> that where else can a young writer, producer, editor, director work with A-list celebrities almost every day, again, have almost complete creative freedom, and get their work published to a website that's seen by tens of millions of people every month. That while we've created great job opportunities and careers for people, we've also been true to the model, keep the cost of content low. Second part is the marriage of Silicon Valley with Hollywood. And again, there's no lack of companies from technology-based that have had great success in, in the, the Hollywood area community, and you got Netflix, Hulu, iTunes, Spotify, Pandora, all very, very successful companies. But all of those, the business disruption was on the distribution side while leaving the content to be created primarily by the big media companies. It's very rare for a company from Silicon Valley like us to succeed on the content side. But by being headquartered in Silicon Valley, we're hanging out with the world-class disruptors, the world-class creators of technology and software, and the people who are the best at social media and it, as it developed. And by being there, being part of that world, and enabling those people, we were able to get a jump on social media, to get now almost six million Twitter followers, et cetera. And that's how we could keep the cost of our marketing the content low. By the same token, we have a second full headquarters here in Hollywood, because that's where the creative people live. And that there are creative people everywhere in the world, I know that, but there are more of them here, and they're concentrated here. And by having a headquarters here, we're able to tap into that more freely. Now, Harvard Business School, Stanford, for those of us out here, they would say that's insane for a small company to have two full disparate headquarters, but for us, it was one of our keys to su succeeding outside the system. The third part of the model being nothing like Kevin Cosner. <laughs> You'll remember that in Field of Dreams, he heard the voice, if you build it, they will come. And spoiler alert, the legendary baseball players came when he built the field. That model resonates very, very well in the Hollywood system, where millions and millions and millions of dollars are spent on projects that may never even come into existence, but certainly nobody knows if they will succeed. And it is the antithesis of the Silicon Valley model, where money is meted out very slowly based on hitting certain milestones and certain proofs of concept. And this was our parody video of Field of Dreams, but are, we are absolutely slave to the model. If they come, we will build it. We don't spend money on development. We don't spend money that we won't see an immediate return. The other thing that we found in this convergence of Silicon Valley and Hollywood was this emerging, this is now four or five years ago, 
advertising with content with social media to create advertising as content, so-called branded entertainment. Here we could treat brands just like we treat talent, that they could communicate in new ways with their new and existing customers. They could be funny and timely while building their brand, and they could do it with the cost of content low, marketing it through our social media and distribution, keeping that low as well, especially as compared to traditional advertising. Perhaps the best example of it is what we did with Will Ferrell in Old Milwaukee, where he did a bunch of local commercials in small Midwestern markets that aired only on local television, but became viral hits on YouTube and elsewhere, seen by millions and millions of people. Here's one of the spots. <laughs> That spot and the still frame from this spot, that's Will Ferrell making out with an elderly Asian woman in the background. <laughs> Those two spots, which cost thousands of dollars, aired in very small markets in the last two Super Bowls. They got millions and millions of views again by going viral, and they got more social media and more traditional media coverage than the eight Super Bowls Budweiser paid $20 million for in the Super Bowls. And again, it's something we've done with now literally hundreds of brands. Same model, treat them right, keep the cost of content low, keep the cost of marketing low. And with all of that, though, I don't kid myself. We actually rely on the system. We rely on the networks and the studios and the ad agencies to buy our TV shows, to buy our movies, to buy our media. But I think that what we've demonstrated is if you do enable people to live out their passions in the environment in which they're comfortable, you will succeed both inside and outside the system. And I do want to leave with one clip that uh, sort of demonstrates all of it. We're all about to be inundated with uh, Steve Jobs' biopics. Bio the studios are spending millions and millions of dollars. Well, we've spent tens of thousands of dollars to develop our parody film based solely on his Wikipedia page. It's a full-length film featuring Justin Long. It will air in uh, April 15th, but I'm not doing this as a sales pitch. We're not allowed to. The relevant point is it will be profitable, and the studio pictures may never even get made, no less be profitable. Here's a quick clip from it. Hello, I'm an Apple. And I'm a Microsoft. I'm really good at things like spreadsheets, calculating. I'm basically like a computer your high school principal uses. And I'm all about music, pictures, movies, stuff like that. Whoa, 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 whoa. I'm good at all those things too. Yeah, but not like me. I'm wearing a cardigan. No, cut, cut, wrong, 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 wrong. Sorry, everyone. What are you doing, Justin? You're supposed to be, you're supposed to be cool and artsy and hip. The kind of guy you want to grab a Jamba Juice with. What is this? Huh? I don't want to get a Jamba Juice with you. I would never get a Jamba Juice with you. I don't think anyone here wants to get a Jamba Juice with Justin. Raise your hand if you want to get a Jamba Juice with the bee pollen and all the fixins with this little smarmy piece of shit. I'm sorry, I, I didn't mean to, I'm just- I'm so sorry? You didn't mean to what? You didn't mean to blow the last 20 takes? Because that's what you did. It's getting embarrassing. I'm embarrassed for you. Just say the lines. Say them simply, honest, unaffected, like an Apple product. Thank you very much.